What our team has done in this area where function keys used to exist is remarkable. But before we get into that, I do think it's worth a moment for a requiem for the function key. <laughs> Apple introduced the touch bar all the way back in 2016. They removed the SD card slot, HDMI port, and a lot of traditional connectivity ports in place of USB-C and Thunderbolt ports. Everyone was excited about the touch bar, including me. The way how Apple like revealed it to everyone with all the new emojis running across the touch bar, how futuristic it looked, the control of volumes and the brightness. It was just something every Apple fan was excited about. In regards to the ports, most people got used to dongles. That added those old ports back to the MacBook. We all started to call that era dongle life. Everyone was just using dongles all around the place. It was crazy. But one thing that couldn't be fixed with dongles was the touch bar. But after about one week when consumers got their hands on the 2016 MacBook Pro, there were mixed responses. Average users loved the touch bar, but most technical students and professionals hated it and who just wanted it gone. This now started to raise the question, why do people hate the touch bar? <sighs> well, you see, before we answer that question, let's talk about me. I personally liked having the touch bar. It was very useful for me when editing programs I used, I had specific menus for the touch bar, and predictive text work well, especially when I spell something incorrectly, I could just tap on the touch bar to correct myself immediately. Having the sliders for the volume up, the volume down, controlling the brightness levels was a huge plus for me. Emoji input without clunky control, command, and space keys is also nice on social media. And most of all, I really don't miss the window management buttons up there, but with all that being said, I rarely use the touch bar due to the fact that it's always docked in. So yeah, that's that. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the touch bar was paradigm shifting or anything. It's not. I just thought it was a better use of space than the traditional buttons up there. But most users thought otherwise. I think they had enough space to still add the touch bar, but... That's a whole nother topic. You see, the thing with the touch bar is, it all comes down to each individual person and their personal preference. So why would Apple want to remove the touch bar for say, John and Michael when Stephanie over there loves it? So I was just curious as to what other tech YouTubers had to say and a couple of my IRL friends, what do they think about touch bar? Do they miss it or not? Here's what they had to say. The touch bar, huh? Yeah. Uh what for? What do you need, what do you need that for? What are you, what, are you, what are you touching things? Don't touch things. Don't touch bars. Why? I never used it. It was stupid. I'll never miss it. It's a faded memory. A distant horizon mirage. Gone and forgotten. Forever. Good riddance. Farewell to the touch bar, as they say. <laughs> Patrick is such jokes, but I hopped onto Twitter. I tried to DM some of my friends. Um, yeah, not everybody answered me, but we got a few people. And the first one was Miles. So Miles Somerville from 9 to 5 Mac, he said he didn't like the touch bar because it always looked like a high end calculated display and the touch bar screen itself was very low res. That's kind of funny. Now, Ellie, on the other hand, found that the touch bar was aesthetically pleasing, you know, a nice addition to the MacBook, and it does have some useful features and creative functions, but the touch bar really annoyed her when she just wanted to turn the volume up or down. She found herself just doing an extra step, and I found a lot of people having that same reasoning. For example, Andres, who just finished his software engineering degree, thought the same thing. So now this is my friend Dane. He was the person who actually made me decide to make this video because he reached out to me and asked, yo, why did Apple want to remove the touch bar? And basically he's saying that the touch bar was really important to him when he was using Logic Pro because he makes music, he's an artist, he's a producer, but he hated it otherwise because it always just accidentally touched the touch bar in other apps. So for him, he has mixed feelings about it and he also said that he's just sticking with the M1 MacBook. And lastly, we have Kanoopsy. He said basically, he couldn't really care less about the touch bar being gone or not. Yes, it was cool when he was using his laptop, but for the most part, he didn't really have time to use the touch bar since his MacBook Pro is always docked. So yeah, to be fair, it just depends on the end user. At the end of the day, users who just wanted to do things quickly 
had to take the extra steps that wasn't really needed. But those are things that pros doesn't really care about. When I say pros, I mean engineers, photographers, video editors, software developers, coders, they all hated the touch bar. And guess who the MacBook Pros are aimed for? You guessed it, pros. So after all, was it worth it? Apple did address the touch bar issue and the removal while they were unveiling the 2021 MacBook Pro. Now, Apple themselves said, Users value the full height function row on the standalone Magic Keyboard, and we've brought it to the MacBook Pro. The physical keys replace the touch bar, bringing back the familiar tactile feel of mechanical keys that pro users love. Now, it's Apple. Apple made it clear that these keys replaced the touch bar, saying they brought it back the quote-unquote familiar tactile feel of the mechanical keys that pro users love. This is undoubtedly a move that makes most users quite happy, but Apple's approach to the whole thing is pretty interesting. Now, Apple, when it comes to Apple, they first unveiled the touch bar back in 2016, right? It was the big thing for the Mac. It received a lot of stage time. It was the main feature in the marketing materials and one of the biggest draws to the laptop at the time. Now, while the touch bar had continued to be or to be used on each MacBook Pro since then, it had seemed that Apple was losing interest in it. When the M1 MacBook Pros was released and announced, I was waiting for like new touch bar features or something like that. Apple barely mentioned the touch bar at all. And on top of that, it was been like a regular source of complaints for MacBook Pro users since its introduction. So while not quite as game breaking as the butterfly keyboard, the touch bar was regularly mocked for solving a problem that didn't need fixing. So Apple may not flat out say or admit that they were wrong about the touch bar, just like how they're not admitting they were wrong about removing the SD card. Apple tried something new and it failed. So the 2021 MacBook Pro is back to reality. I think Apple removed it because the core target audience spoke up, just like they did with the butterfly keyboards. So maybe in the next future, we could see the touch bar again, but for now, it has been laid to rest. When I look back on the touch bar for the MacBook, I'm reminded of a saying. Uh, I was traveling one day in the Pacific Northwest, up in the mountains, and I saw a coyote in the distance. A coyote turned to me and he said, who gives a f And that's just, that's honestly, that stuck with me. And I think it really applies to the touch bar on the MacBook.